Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Um, I wanted to make a quick video because I see a lot of the narrative going around that GM Super Cruise is better or superior or performs better than Tesla's autopilot. And while everyone is entitled to their own opinions based on their experience, I kind of feel like the Tesla autopilot system in the hands of some of these reviewers is not quite represented the correct way. So I wanted to take a minute to show everyone, show the world, what Tesla's autopilot system can do on the highway as it compares to GM Super Cruise. Now, obviously, Super Cruise has mapped highways and relies on that mapped data to be able to allow the system to work. Autopilot can work virtually anywhere, even on local roads and city streets. However, the more apt comparison, because GM Super Cruise is always only restricted to highways, is to test on the highway. So on highway, Tesla's autopilot suite has a feature or, or, or segment of features uh, that allows it to do what's known as navigate on autopilot. This is the feature that needs to be compared to GM Super Cruise when we're talking about a one-to-one -to -one apples to apples comparison of the two systems. Navigate on autopilot, as of this video, is bundled with the quote unquote full self-driving features at 10,000 US dollars at the moment of this video, okay? And so what I want everyone to understand is that this feature allows the car to basically navigate by itself on the highway and make automatic lane changes by itself with or without driver confirmation. All right, guys, so I'm going to activate it right now so you can see I have a destination in. Don't mind the speed limit. The speed limit is actually uh, 55, but uh, the, the construction is throwing everything off. So I'm going to activate it now. I'm going to have a hand on the wheel. It's going to automatically make this lane change for me. Automatic lane changes. I'll throw the cameras up so you can see that as well, uh, what exactly what it's doing. Right, so automatic lane changes again, getting into the right lane automatically. I didn't have to press anything. Super Cruise, you have to actually press the turn signal in order to acknowledge that you wanted to make a lane change. Tesla, you don't have to do anything. I just have my hand on the wheel. Now, Super Cruise is a hands-off system, but it requires your eyes to be on the road. And that's kind of the same thing as having a hand on the wheel, in my opinion. It needs your attention. Having your hand on the wheel does mean you can keep your eyes off the road for a split second. Now, whether you want to do that or not is up to you. Use your own discretion. But if you want to look down, if you want to pick something up, if you want to take a sip of water, you can do that without bothering the system. Super Cruise, you have to have your eyes on the road. And if you don't have your eyes on the road or if you have sunglasses or something to obstruct your eyes, then you won't be able to use the system. Tesla's system doesn't work like that. You simply need to have a hand on the road. And in my opinion, it works a lot better this way because it allows you to be able to take action should you need to. When you don't have your hands on the road on the wheel, it's slowing down for this car. It sees it's going to merge. It's automatically slowing down. My hand and feet are not touching, and my feet aren't touching here right now. Uh, but it's automatically doing that. But when you have your hand on the wheel, you're in a position where you can take control and take over should the car do something unexpected, like disengage or something like that. With Super Cruise, your hands are off the wheel, but you need your eyes on there. But if you need to react, you need to make your hands available. Okay, we're going to take an exit lane here automatically. You didn't have to do anything automatically does it. Now, for the purposes of demonstration, I will show you that you can also do this with, without having a hand on the wheel. You can have your, take your hand off the wheel and just sort of let it do its, do its thing. Okay, taking another exit lane here. Okay, so this is an interchange from one highway to the next. Super Cruise is not doing that right now. Navigate on autopilot is doing it. Flawlessly, I might add. Okay, so I have no hands on the wheel right now. Okay, it's gonna signal me to get over. Automatically taking it, taking the turn. Okay, very nice. Steep turn here, slowing down automatically. I'm not really doing anything, just standing by in case I need to take over. Speeding up a bit, sees a truck is there. It's not gonna pass just yet. It's gonna get clear and then automatically make that lane change. Look at that. Again, I didn't have to press a turn stalk or anything. It automatically made it and a car is passing, so it did it safely. So this is what I mean when I say that this is a better system, a superior system or better performing system than GM Super Cruise. 
It just doesn't have this capability. What it does, GM Super Cruise, what it does, it does well. And it's good to have that peace of mind or to say that you can have hands off, but hands off is not really uh, the best thing to do right now in this case, uh, just because you want to have some accessibility to be able to take action as needed. So again, I'm just showing you what it would look like if I didn't have my hands on the wheel, but provided some other form of, of, uh, of pressure for the steering wheel. But in actuality, you need to hold it like this. Okay, so this, this is what it's for. This is what it's meant for. These long, monotonous drives where nothing's really happening. Cars are passing. Um, and you have long stretches of road. This is where the value of these systems come from. Yes, you could drive yourself, but then when you have long road trips, you're tired. Uh, maybe you're not well enough to drive on your own in full. This could be an assist and an aid for you to be able to drive that way. But again, in this instance, Tesla's autopilot, navigating autopilot specifically, is again better than... GM Super Cruise. No nags, no warnings. I am providing some pressure on the wheel to comply the system, to keep the system compliant. Uh, but this is as relaxing as it can be. I'm gonna drop this down so you guys can take a look at the map, see what maneuver it is coming up. It's gonna be uh, another interchange to another uh, highway, and then it's going to be a sharp exit turn. So we're gonna see how autopilot handles this. Again, asking for my confirmation, or asking, giving me acknowledgement that it's gonna make a lane change. Starting to make the lane change where it's safe to do so. And we're off. I'm gonna hold my hand on the wheel just to you know, be representative of how you should actually use the autopilot system in its current form. Uh, maybe at one point in time when they advance the software enough, you'll be able to have no hands at all or no eyes looking at the road and uh, it'll just sort of do its own thing. But right now we're not there yet. Again, having that hand on the wheel just makes it easier for you to take action should you need to make an adjustment, should something happen in real time that is not accounted for by the system. A little interchange here and then a nice sharp exit now autopilot will continue on city streets but that's not really a comparative example for super cruise since it's all only restricted to the highway so i won't compare that element of it but i will compare the fact that i was on the highway i activated the system it's doing all the driving for me all the heavy lifting and it's going to take this exit right now which is a very sharp exit as well uh, and what that looks like in terms of slowing down, getting in the right lane, turning on the turn signal, and preparing the driver to take over and start driving or allow the system to continue on the city streets version of uh, autopilot known as full self-driving or city streets. Turn signal activated automatically, takes the exit lane, gets me in, in lane centered, and it's gonna slow down significantly, see that? Slow, it slows down significantly, allowing it to take this turn safely. It's a high curvature road, switches to regular autopilot, which will go into more full self-driving, and it takes this entire turn by itself. It just beeps at me just to let me know that I have to take control. And we're off to the races, okay? So that's really what it looks like in terms of using Navigator and Autopilot, Tesla's Autopilot Suite. Um, with no agenda, <laughs> I don't know if, if GM is paying people and that's cool, go ahead and get paid. But if it's not a real representation of what the system is doing, I think that's, a, that's an injustice and a disservice to the people who are looking to compare the two systems to figure out which one is better. If you are into the Cadillac brand and that's your thing, definitely get, get a Cadillac and get Super Cruise. If you're on the fence and don't know which one and you're using these systems to determine which car you're gonna get, definitely take a closer look at Tesla's autopilot, experience it for yourself, schedule a test drive, it's free, and you'll be able to experience it for yourself and make your own decision to see which one feels safer, feels more comfortable, etc. All right, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Which do you think is better, autopilot or super cruise, and why? Uh, love to talk about it in the comment respectfully. Uh, until the next time, enjoy your day, enjoy your Tesla.